Hi everyone, I hope you're doing very well. My name is Juan and welcome back to another book review. So today we're going to talk about the great novel The Bluest Eye by the American writer Toni Morrison. And if you appreciate my reviews and would like to show your support, please give this review a like and subscribe to my channel. That way this video will get to more people who might also enjoy it. Thanks. Okay, so let's talk about The Bluest Eye, which was first published in 1970. The Bluest Eye was a Toni Morrison's first novel. I have already reviewed her 1987 Pulitzer Prize winning novel Beloved, so I am going to link to that review here in case you're interested. Now, The Bluest Eye is a novel that explores a theme that has always interested me, which is why in the West and many other parts of the world, whiteness is held as the standard of beauty for women and men, but mostly for women. So I don't know if you have ever stopped uh, to think about this, but it is a rather complex theme. Of course, this has to do with colonization and with the repercussions of those European empires that colonized much of Africa, Asia and the Americas. But in her novel, Morrison does not go into the origins of this. She's not interested in writing a book on the history of beauty standards or whiteness. That's not the job of a novelist anyway. So in The Bluest Eye, Morrison talks about a black girl, Bacola, who feels ugly just because she's not white. I think that in The Bluest Eye, Toni Morrison makes some simple points about the importance of media representation that I suspect not many people wrote about in the 1960s or 1970s. Bacola, however, is not the only character who feels inadequate and ugly because of the way she looks. Her mother, who loves movies, also feels frustration because not only does she not look like the women she sees on the silver screen, and remember that the novel is set in the 1930s, but also her life couldn't be more different from the plot of those movies. So I would say that The Bluest Eye is not an easy novel to read, and I'll explain why later in the uh, spoilery part of the review, but don't worry, I'll let you know when we get there. Uh, suffice it to say for now that there is uh, violence, both physical and symbolic, and even depictions of rape. And I think that some uh, prospective readers might like to know that before deciding if this novel is for them or not. The Bluest Eye is an incredibly sad and brutal story. If you have read other books by Morrison, I don't think you will be shocked. But if this is your first novel by her, I think you'd better be prepared for it. And well, I think this is all I can say about the incredible novel The Bluest Eye without spoiling it for people who have not read it yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to summarize the plot and talk about The Bluest Eye in more detail and there will be some spoilers, okay? So uh, you have been warned, if you don't want to hear any spoilers about The Bluest Eye, I think you should stop watching this video right about now and I will see you again very soon, I hope, for another video. Okay, for those of you who are still here, thank you. I'm now going to summarize the plot and share more thoughts I had on The Bluest Eye. So we have two young sisters living in Lorraine, Ohio with their parents at the end of the Great Depression. There is Claudia who is nine and Frida who is 10. Because money is short, uh, the family takes on a boarder, a man named uh, Henry Washington and a young girl named Pecola. Pecola is the protagonist of this novel and she thinks she's ugly because she's black. Her idol is the white child star Shirley Temple. Eventually, Pecola moves back with her family, but theirs is not a happy home. Pecola feels unloved by her distant mother, her often drunk father and her brother Sammy. She thinks that people would love her if only she were white or at least had blue eyes. Pecola just hates being black. And I would add that what she hates is living in a world where having dark skin is seen as a negative trait. Anyway, there is a reason Pecola's parents are the way they are. Her mother, Pauline, feels lonely. She loves going to the movies, but movies make her feel inadequate and ugly. Pauline also likes playing victim to her husband's abusive behavior, which she actually encourages. She hates everything about her life, uh, because like her daughter, she compares herself to white women and feels lacking. We also learn that Piccola's father, Charlie, was raised by his great aunt after his parents abandoned him. Later, when his uh, great aunt dies, he finds his father but is rejected by him. So the poor guy's life has been full of humiliations. Okay, um, so then, uh, then one day Charlie comes home and finds uh, Piccola alone 
and he rapes her. To make matters worse, uh, later Pauline not only does not believe her daughter, but also beats her up for lying. Pecola goes to see some kind of local mystic and asks him to grant her the wish of having blue eyes. And of course, he doesn't give her blue eyes because that's impossible, but he uses her to kill a dog he doesn't like. The rape uh, results in Pecola's pregnancy. Claudia and Frida, her friends, find out about it. The two girls want Pecola's baby to live, so they spend all their savings on marigold seeds with the belief that if the flowers bloom, Piccola's baby will also live. But the flowers do not bloom, and when Piccola's baby is born prematurely, it dies. Choli rapes Piccola again, runs away and dies. Piccola believes that her eyes have now turned blue. She has finally gone insane. And the novel ends there, with Piccola believing that she finally possesses the bluest eyes. So this novel, as you can tell, is hard to read and incredibly sad. And I forgot to uh, say earlier that the novel is narrated at least in part by Claudia. But as usual with Toni Morrison's novels, uh, the narrative thread is not straightforward. There is no linear narrative and there are other uh, stories as well that we hear about uh, in the novel. Claudia doesn't seem to be uh, plagued by that self-hatred or pain that most of the other characters share, and I think this makes her the best narrator out of the possible bunch of characters. The sexual elements of this novel are particularly hard to read, which is why I warned you at the top, because I wanted people who haven't read the novel yet and might not watch uh, this whole review uh, to the end to avoid spoilers to know that before deciding whether to read The Bluest Eye or not. I know that some people are triggered by material like this, or they might just find it too painful to read about, but I would say that the depictions of sexual violence in the novel are not gratuitous or exploitative at all, okay? So if you have read uh, The Bluest Eye, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate that. And if you haven't read it yet, let me know what you think about uh, my review and if you think uh, now you will read the novel. Okay, and if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends on social media. You can also follow me on Twitter and or Instagram at Bookish Islander. So we can talk about books on other platforms too, outside of uh, YouTube. But this is all from me for now. I hope to see you again very soon for another book review or bookish video. Bye for now.